An up-and-coming Russian model is horribly mutilated in a brutal crime. Bulgaria has its own nymph that will make you dance to death. And then we travel to Japan to take a look at a story that some people claim is one of the earliest meetings between aliens and humans. Who was the woman in the boat? Find out today on the seductress special of Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. It is the seductress special because I met my future wife this weekend. Now before you panic, before you go, don't leave us Jason, don't leave us. She's gone. She's still alive. (laughs) That sounded ominous. She's gone. She was passing through Hood River on a road trip, or the road trip ended in Hood River. Didn't really make heads or tails of that. She was there with a bunch of friends. I was at a bar with my friends. Her and her friends are at this bar. And I saw her, and I go, I need to talk to this girl. She looks like if Taylor Swift was a librarian at a community college. Which, which in my world, is is top-notch. Now, before you guys go, that is sexist, Jason. You described a woman in physical terms. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you why I'm in love with her. So I walk up to her and start making conversation with her. Which is a little... I normally don't approach girls in packs, but I do from time to time. This one I kind of had to. And so I walk up to her, I start chatting her up. We're talking for a bit. We probably talked for like 20, 30 minutes. Long enough for me to fall in love. We're talking... That's all it takes. I'm talking to her. We start talking about science because she's like a chemist. And I go, or or chemistry major, again, I wasn't paying super close attention at this point, but anyways, we're talking, and she goes, what does silver say to gold when he walks in a bar? Now, that is a very clunky delivery of a joke. That's a terrible delivery, right? It should just be, what does silver say to gold? So I'm just going to do it that way, because I'm a professional comedian. I'm not, but more so than her, what does silver say to gold? And the answer, or the punchline, not the answer, is not. It's not a quiz. You don't get graded on this. Okay, let me start over. What does silver say to gold? I guess you do need the second part. What does silver say to gold when he meets him in a bar? Hey, you. How you doing? So she told me that joke, and my immediate internal response was, how many children do you want? Like, who doesn't want to be with a girl that goofy that she'll tell that joke to a total stranger in the first 10 minutes of meeting her? But she's gone. She left with her friends. So, Taylor, if you're still out there, I hope you are. Again, she's not buried. I don't know why you keep making this so ominous. She's still out there, law enforcement. I had nothing to do. If she isn't, I had nothing to do with it. But Taylor, that's her fake name because she does look like Taylor Swift, kind of. Taylor, if you're out there and you're, she doesn't listen to this podcast, too. <laughs> I asked her about that because you never know. She doesn't believe in ghosts. She also said I was smart. Which proves to me she doesn't listen to the podcast. But anyways, you know where I live. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on our first story. Oh, so this is the Seductress special for two reasons. One, because I met the future Mrs. Jason Carpenter. And two, I'll get to in a second, but I got three stories of seduction and darkness and kind of lightheartedness. No, I guess they're all pretty bad. So don't listen to this episode, future wife. Let's go ahead. We are going to go to Russia. Let's take the rabbit robo. We haven't broken this out in a while. And we're rowing across the ocean. Hey, actually, all these stories kind of take place around each other, so this will be cool. We're going to take the rabbit rowboat. We're going to take it to Russia. We're going to get there, and it's the year 2016, because it took so long, time reset, and it started over. So the year is 2016. We're in Russia. There is a young woman named Stefani Dubrovina. Stefani Dubrovina. And she's a 17-year-old fashion model in Russia, living the high life. That's not true. It's funny. A lot of people think models live very glamorous lives. Same thing with porn stars, but mostly for the most part, models, they're usually in abject poverty. You, I can almost guarantee you live better than 90% of the models out there. And I'm even talking about models who do like runway shows. Like, of course, the models who do like suicide girls or just like webcam stuff, they're not making a ton of money. But like when you see models in magazines, a lot of times they're very, very poor. You're really not making a lot of money. You're probably, and and unless you're a top model, America's top model, or is that America's next model? doesn't matter. Very rarely do you make millions of dollars. A good model can clear like 50000 a year. And then the majority of models are like 20000 So 
It's really, really, or maybe more, but they have a lot of expenses with it as well. And they know they don't have to pay you that much because there's 100,000 other girls who would kill to get where you're at. So it's a very, very low income job unless you're a super, super elite. But anyway, she looks like she's living a glamorous life, but she's not. She does have a sister, Elisa Vita, Elisa Vita Dubrovina, who's 19. So Stefani's 17 years old, fashion model. Her older sister, Elisa Vita. They are very, very close. They actually are uncannily close. Same hair color, same lipstick shade. But Elizaveta is not a model. She's an attractive woman, but she's not a model. So, one day, Stefani is found dead. Dead in her apartment. Her lover, who is 44-year-old Alexei Fativ, he's 44, she's 17. He had left the apartment that he was staying at with uh, Stefani, and Elizaveta was visiting he leaves to go buy some wine. This is what he says. He comes back to the apartment. Stefani is stabbed to pieces. And that's not an exaggeration. 189 stab wounds, eyeballs cut out, ears cut off. And Elizaveta's like, see ya. And she starts walking out of the apartment. And uh, Alexi's like fighting her and holds her there until the police show up. Now, that happened in 2016. The reason why this is news today is because the trial is starting. What happened is the police say that Elizaveta killed her out of jealousy. She was so jealous that her little sister was so much more beautiful than her. Drove her to a fit of rage. And she got drugged at a party. And honestly, there's not a lot of details on this case. You assume it'd be really big because true crime people are kind of voracious about this stuff. But And every time they have an article about these people, it's just photo after photo of models and stuff like that. So you think it'd be more information, but I don't know how, what type of drug she was on or if it was voluntary or involuntary that she was at a club or a party and something got laced. But anyways, they're saying Elizaveta was drugged out and she was finally pushed past the boiling point due to her jealousy and mutilated her face and stabbed her all over the place. That rhymed, unfortunately. Gouged her eyes out and so on and so forth. Elizaveta saying, no, 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 Alexi did it. I was I was just there. And what's weird is she was arrested in 2016. The trial's taking place now. It took her three years for her to be competent to stand trial. So whatever drugs she was on, that would have had to be a massive dose. Or she was faking it, or both. But three, what, when's the last time you took a drug trip that lasted three years? No human ever. I guess maybe, like, if you did a bunch of acid. But again, like, I think even if you did a bunch of acid in one night, it wouldn't take you three years. You wake up, you're like, oh, I got a horrible hangover. Man, what did I do last night? And they're like, well, three years ago, you killed your sister. And she's like, ugh, I knew I shouldn't have drank the punch. And to put a little paranormal bent on it, you know, we do cover true crime, but to put an extra little Dead Rabbit Radio bent on this story, she says... That now that she's competent, now that she can stand trial, she says, now that I've regained my memory after that horrible drug trip that lasted three years, I saw in the apartment Alexi shapeshift into a demon. I didn't kill her, he did, but I'm the one standing trial. Now, he probably didn't turn into a demon, that was probably part of her drug hallucination, but the police have said Alexi was just a witness to this whole thing, he had nothing to do with it. Which is also an interesting note, a lot of articles said he was the witness, but I'm thinking, I thought he came home after the murder. So there's some details that aren't 100% in there, but, driven mad by someone else's beauty? It's not really a seductress, it doesn't really fit the theme of the show, but it does lead us into our next story. I guess like just being like so enchanted by beauty that it drives you mad. I guess that's kind of, that's seduction. Not seduction you want to do, because you don't want to get murdered, but it's seduction, so it fits. But it also leads into our next story. Now our next story was actually a request in kind of a roundabout way. So our next story though, and it leads into this, is actually a request. I got this request from a listener named, and it's kind of not what he requested, but but I got this email from a listener named Jasador. Jasador or Jasador. Jasador. Also listed, also calls himself the Bulgarian Jason. So thank you so much for this recommendation, Jasador. He's from Bulgaria, and which is obvious from the name. And it's funny because a long time ago I did an episode about the Tsar China hole, and I ragged on uh, Bulgaria for not having warlords. There was some. There was something they were looking for a great Bulgarian warlord, and I go, "What were there like two? And I've gotten so much YouTube comments and the occasional email. And 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 Jason Orr mentioned that too. He's like, you know, we have like a long, rich history of warlords. It's just not very well known. And I and I understand that. It was obviously a joke when I said that. I'm sure you know 
Bulgaria is a total war-torn country that has no vegetation because war after war after war after war over there. They can't build a house because there's constant warfare for the past thousand years. While the rest of Europe was building cathedrals, Bulgaria is just one giant village to this day. Again, I'm just joking. Thank you for all the people who responded to my anti-Bulgarian rant and will respond to this one. Thank you, Jason Dor, for this recommendation, though. So what he did was he sent me this email. I thought this was interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what he wrote to you. I'm going to read this particular part because I can't cover this part because it's all in Bulgarian stuff, language. But um, it led me somewhere else. So let me read this part of the email. I want to, and I'll have this video in the show notes. I wanted to, if you can speak Bulgarian, I wanted to introduce you to a more obscure thing in Bulgaria. It's a village called Shai Shensi. It's super weird, this whole video. These old ladies live hundreds of miles from the nearest cities. They just kind of grow what they eat, and every night they are like, oh yeah, we just close up the windows, or the Samodivas are going to get us. Like, super effing casually. Like, you know when you live near the train station for a long time, you stop noticing things, and someone comes over and they are like, how can you actually stand this noise? It's the same effing thing. They say you go around the houses and sing and dance, and the locals just kind of let it be. So I read that, and I go, what's a Samodiva? Like, that was my takeaway there. So there is, like, this 40-minute-long video, and it probably is a fairly interesting video about this culture there, but I don't... And he offered to translate it, but so I think you I appreciate that offer. But with a daily show, a lot of times we're just kind of getting stuff out. But in this email, I go, what is a Samodiva? So I looked that up. And this is the reason why we have this Dr. Special. So thank you again, Jason Dore, assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, for giving me kind of the theme for this episode. I go, this is something I can put my hat on. I can find two other seductor stories to work into this. So we are traveling to Bulgaria. So we're going to carry the boat over land. I'm sure there's some rivers that go from Russia to Bulgaria. And we know we're in Bulgaria because the the blue crystal waters of Russia slowly start to turn brown and swampy. And now we're we're rowing through a swamp, super slow. See a sign that says, Welcome to Bulgaria. Yeah, I guess that's fine. We're rowing past the Bulgarian warlord monument. It goes, Here lies Bulgaria's greatest warriors. All two of them. We look at each other. We're like, yeah, that's what I thought, bro. That's what I thought. We're rowing the boat down the Bulgarian river slash swamp at this point, And we hop out. We carefully unpack the clean water we brought with us. And some sandwiches that are in Ziploc bags. We don't want to eat anything around here. We're, I have a lot of listeners in Bulgaria. We're walking through Bulgaria now. Eating our clean Russian food and drinking our pure crystal water. And the townspeople are like, oh, they must be witches. How do they seal such things? What is this plastic wrap? What's plastic? We don't even know what plastic is. So anyways, we're walking around Bulgaria. And we decide to take a shortcut through the woods. So we walk through the woods and kind of like, walking around. I'm like, hey, did I tell you about that hot chick I met at a bar? You're like, yes, Jason. Several times on the way on the boat ride over. I was like, oh, I can't wait to see her again. So as we're walking through the woods... We see a beautiful woman out in the woods, just kind of dancing around by herself, doing the robot. We're like immediately entranced by this woman. And what we're seeing is a being known as a Samo Diva. They're described as blonde, tall, slender women with pale, glowing skin and fiery eyes. Her eyes just burn into our soul. And she is so beautiful, we both fall in love. Now, that's bad. It's bad to fall in love with a mythical creature right off the bat. It's probably even worse when both of us are in love, because then we're going to fight each other for her. Like, rustling, rolling through the dirt, rolling through the mud of Bulgaria. We're like, ah, it burns! It burns! It's not normal mud! And But anyways, we have, a, we have to call it a quick truce, because I can't kill my listener, and I can't be killed myself. So we both hop up, and we begin pursuing this woman. And she's running away. Okay, this got dark. This got dark. Okay, it's part of the it's part of the legend. We're not just doing this because we're creepers. Part of the okay. Let me get to the legend part because that sounded really dark. What it is is that when you see us, <laughs> when you see a Samo diva, you become instantly in love with her, and then you begin to chase her, and she runs away. And what she's doing is she's actually draining your energy from you. 
So the more you chase her, you can never catch her. The more you chase her, the more she runs, the more energy she's draining from you, and eventually you become weakened. She circles back around and she tortures you to death. Which, I mean, if she's that attractive, I can. That's a, that is a death I'm willing to do. Like, the running part? No, nah, I'm not cool with that. I'm like, oh, my knees. But, I mean, like, if it's, I'm being tortured to death by a stunning woman, yeah. I mean, it's not on my to-do list of ways to die, but, you know, there's worse things to see. Like, I'd rather see a beautiful woman cutting my heart out than, like, fall face first into a meat grinder. A very slow meat grinder. A rusty meat grinder that needed to be maintained a couple years ago. So, horribly killed by this woman. Tortures you. Not just kills you, tortures you. Also, if you're walking by the forest, because they usually hang out in the forest. We'll get to that in a second. But you're walking by the forest. They, they tend to hang out by themselves. Samo Diva. Samo means alone and Diva means wild. So that means like alone in the wild. It actually means alone and wild or something like that. You see them at a, sometimes they go to dance parties because they do hang out with each other. You see them at a dance party. If you see them dancing, they play such beautiful music and the, they're so, so hot. You go to the dance party and you dance until you die. They hang out at night. They go away when the sun comes up. And you just, you're dead in the woods. Which would be a way to explain why people die to heart attacks and stuff like that. It would also be a way to explain when you find your elderly grandpa in the woods dead and his pants are down. We've looked at myths like this before. That would be a way to explain why you would come across bodies in the woods who apparently died of natural causes. People who die a heart attack in the woods, you would create myths around that. You'd be like, oh, maybe this happened. Or you could be saying, hey, listen, I'm a woman. Jason, you keep going off on these adventures and getting murdered by mule women who turn into mules. And you're you're falling for these beautiful six foot tall blonde haired maidens that torture you to death. And for some reason, you're okay with that. I'm a woman. I don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to wrestle you in the burning Bulgarian mud. I am not under their power. But... If a, so if a man sees them, they're going to dance till they die, or they're going to chase him through the woods and get exhausted and get murdered. If a woman sees a Sam Odiva, they will kill themselves on the spot because they are so beautiful and a human woman can never be that beautiful. You will murder yourself on the spot. So that's why in the email, the elderly women were like, oh yeah, we sing and dance to keep the Sam, or they're shutting the windows to keep the Sam Odivas away. They do that because if a woman sees a Sam Odiva, they will kill themselves on the spot. So you have a risk of doing it too. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't wrestle me in the noxious Bulgarian earthscape, but you would just kill yourself. And they have a couple different origin stories. One of them is they're the daughter of the Lamia or the Lamia. It's this snake monster goddess dragon thing from old, old times. Some people say that they are virgins who died before they lost their virginity. That's pretty dark. And then there's no jokes there. And then the other one is they're just wicked women. These things are normally considered evil. Mischievous at best. Evil at worst. Um, Sometimes they're just wretched women. Horrible women who died and are trapped between heaven and hell. What I love is they have, they don't have a lot of like easy ways to kill them. There's a Macedonian version of this myth that if you poke them with a thorn, they die or they lose their powers, which is actually, if, if you are a forest dwelling creature and your weakness is thorns, how do you even survive to the modern age to like even be a legend? You should have died out during the dinosaur. That's an interesting question. Were they, if we accept that these like fey type spirits exist, these forest nymphs, cryptids, cryptids are a bit different because you figure cryptids may have evolved, but like spirit based, where this is what I'm getting at. Where was Zeus during the age of the dinosaurs? Like, were the Greek gods around during the crustacean period? Were the Greek gods around during the Jurassic period? Was Zeus straight up like changing himself into a T Rex and getting banged by other T Rexes? Like, that's interesting. Like, all of these forest nymph-type characters, are le- were there leprechauns <laughs> getting chased by stegosauruses back in the day? Because technically, they would have had to have been. Because leprechauns, fey, all that stuff exists out of our reality. They're interdimensional. So they would have existed. They may have popped their head in every 65 million years and go, oh no, an asteroid, and then went back. But I don't think Bigfoot was getting chased by a pterodactyl. But I think that... These type of creatures, these, what, what are we talking about again? Oh, these Samo Divas. Did they exist? Were they like riding on the backs of Triceratops? Interesting. Hmm. I wonder if, I wonder if anyone's looked into that. I don't think anyone is as insane as I am, but interesting. Nonetheless, 
they so you, you get pricked by a thorn and they die or they lose their power or something like that. It's kind of the same thing, but because that's how they exist. Also, they take baths. They're only around from like the evening. They leave before the sun comes up. But the first thing you do every night is they take a bath, which is everyone should do really, or shower at least. But anyway, so they take a bath. They take all their clothes off. They wear these long white dresses and they have like a green or a rainbow belt. So they take their clothes off and they jump in with all their other hot nymph buddies and they're swimming in the water. If you happen to jack one of their dresses, you have power over them. They will marry you and they can have children. But the whole time they'll be thinking, if only I could get my dress back. These creatures are pretty popular in Bulgarian myths. There are a lot of the like antagonists or obstacles for the hero to overcome. Sometimes they're the main antagonist. Sometimes they're just something... Because they're medicinal, they you, you one of their key points is that if you um, overhear them talking to their buddies, they're, they're, all they do is talk about medicine and stuff like that. So there's Bulgarian folk tales where people are like hiding in the bushes and they're like, oh, did you know if you rub mushrooms on your eyeballs, you can grow wings? And then the guy will go back and rub mushrooms on his eyeballs and fly and save his damsel in distress. So sometimes they're simply an obstacle to overcome or to get information from. Sometimes they're bad guys. But they have a legend of a guy who jacked this chick's dress and forced her to marry him. And and she got pregnant and had a kid. And then they went to the wedding where they were going to get married. So they go to the wedding, his wedding. They're getting married. And his dad is like, I thought you said that girl was a Sam Odiva. And he's like, oh, she was. I stole her dress. And they're like, dude, she... It's hor- She's dancing horribly. That's not what a Sam Odiva dance is like. And the dude's like, let me get her clothes. This is years later after he stole her clothes. Let me put her clothes on her, then she'll have her powers again. And he gives her back the clothes, she puts it on, she dances away, and he flies away. And, and he's left with this son that he has no wife for. Not the worst ending to a fable. He didn't end up like getting his liver eaten out for eternity. He just has to be a single dad. There's nothing wrong with that. And this is the part, so we have these tall, blonde, they're blonde, oh, by the way, I think I mentioned that a couple times, they actually have blonde hair, it's part of them being so beautiful, but their hair is described as loose slash a wig, and I guess you can yank their hair off, and that also can diminish their power, doesn't completely take it away, but it does weaken them to a certain point, and my favorite part of this myth is they are known to live in, not around trees, like a normal nymph. They live inside trees. They're also known to live in abandoned shacks and dark caves. And I like all of those things because those are probably the only three places that are worse than my apartment. So I don't have to worry about bringing a Samodiva over to my place because then I can. I don't feel bad about bringing them back to my place. Like my place is still pretty clean since I had it sh- uh, feng shuied by that girl who came over. But my bedroom is just like four feet of clothes on top of my bed. But you can't really complain about my bedroom if you live in a tree. Like, I think that is a fair thing. You come over to my apartment and you're like, have you ever vacuumed? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I vacuumed a couple months ago. And she's like, Ugh. and that's fair. Okay, I'm sure the tree it is not, at least has a clean floor. As clean as ground can get in Bulgaria. But I'll give Bulgaria that. I'm sure their carpets are cleaner than mine. But I'd be like, listen, listen. Yes, my bed is covered in clothes. And yes, some of those clothes probably have like flecks of <laughs> of sand and wood in them because I walk everywhere. I'm a nymph like you. I live in the forest as well. Or I just walk through wooded areas. It's creepy. And yes, sometimes because I throw my clothes on my bed, <laughs> dirt and pieces of wood on it, <laughs> the dirt and the pieces of wood get on the bed. And then I brush it off with my hand, and then you come over, and you're like, "Why is there a piece of bark? why is there a piece of bark on your bed?" Which, if uh, to a normal woman, obviously, I will say a lie. I will come up with a quick lie as to why there is bark in my bed. But if you live in a tree, maybe they like bark. If you live in an abandoned shack, to you, I live in a mansion. Like, yes, I could probably do my dishes. I'll do my dishes, but at least I have a sink. You have an abandoned shack. If you live in a dark cave, the fact that I even have lighting makes me Daddy Warbucks. So the Samodiva is an actual cryptid that I could see myself in a relationship with. A Samodiva is a cryptid or a nymph that I could actually see coming over to my place. And before she tortures me to death, go, this place isn't that bad. 
I could see myself in a relationship with the Sam Odiva. But more importantly, I think a Sam Odiva is the only cryptid that could see itself in a relationship with me. Because, let's be honest, even Bigfoot would come over and be like, uh, me not know about safety of sitting down on couch. I'm like, no, dude, it's totally cool. Uh, what's that smell? Me smell many smells in woods. This smells like decaying elk and axe body spray. And I'm like, just get in the bed, Bigfoot. Just get in the bed. Mothman would just fly away. Leprechauns would be like, my luck has run out. This truly is the end of the rainbow. This is where color does not exist. But the Samodiva is a creature after my own heart. And in the end, she may not be the seductress. No, it is I who am seducing her. Why does that sound so dark? Why is that supposed to sound? Uh, but we sorry, we've run out of time for the hollow boat story. So the seductress episode is just those two stories. The hollow boat story, though, we will tell you tomorrow. I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser here now. The year is 1803, and a boat crashes onto the shore of Japan. It's 10 feet high, 17 feet wide, with a diamond-shaped bottom and a lid. And when the fishermen open it up, they find food, water, a beautiful woman, and a box she refuses to let anyone see what's inside. Yeah, I like that. I like ending that on a teaser. That's kind of cool. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. <laughs>